Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark Spencer. I'm with Steve Martin. Hey, Steve. Hey. And welcome to our new studio here. Yes, uh, uh, we're in a padded room. Yeah, we're still we're still close by. We're in Petaluma. We're just in a different studio. There's a lot of stuff happening up here. And uh, what's happening that's big for us, and perhaps for many of you, is Fonica Pro 10.0.6, the big update. So uh, for this new location, we're going to launch into a series of MacBreak Studios discussing features of the new update, kind of a little piece by piece and dive down. So um, what are we going to dive into today? Well. Um we're going to look at uh, importing, and there's a whole bunch of enhancements that have taken place across the board. Import, editing, effects, uh, export, um, audio. The audio. There's just a bunch of stuff. So what we want to do is is dive in and hopefully get a little bit more granule, granular in these uh, in these Mac break episodes. So, so the whole process of editing that you go through, you're going to come across these features as you exactly. work. Exactly. So we're going to kind of start to pick them. So we'll start at the beginning. We'll start at the beginning. Okay. okay. In previous versions of Final Cut Pro 10. Product 10, uh, you had two import options. You had an import file and an import camera. It was a little confusing because files existed on cameras and they existed on your hard drive. So which one do I click, camera or file import? You need to make a choice. One choice now. Okay, just okay. just a single choice for import. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just I'm going to just create a new event, and uh, you'll see as soon as I create a new event, there's now one one button. One button. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you were going to make reference <laughs> yeah, to our yeah, spider. Yeah, all this, all this big mess of, of ours here. This is this is actually truly amazing. We've got we have a USB hub because we only have, we're running out of USB ports here. But we have a card reader, we have a connected GoPro camera, and a connected 60D DSLR. DSLR. So three things going through the hub, and I'm going to I'm going to click the import media button. And the great thing about the new import media window is that it sees all your connected device, all of them. In fact, if I zoom in here, you can see there's a. Uh, there's the there's my card reader, uh, there's my GoPro camera, and there's the 60D. The 60D. So all, all three of these uh, cameras essentially are hooked up, and we can start importing. Uh, we can import anything off of any of them. Anything right? off of any of them, just like okay. you said. Now, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, with this GoPro camera, and uh, we'll we'll look at this first. And what, what I want you to see this is that you uh, you can skim through it, and you can make selections by selecting an entire clip. Like this, well, you can make individual selections by, of course, um, dragging across. So you can create a selection range. You can create a selection range. So if the clip isn't selected, and you uh, if you have nothing selected, you can drag and create the initial selection. Um, but point is, you can make multiple selections. And in fact, let me zoom in a little, little bit here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a selection on this clip. And by the way, if the clip's already selected, you use the option key to make a new selection. Okay. If you already have a selection, by the way, this is. A selection I previously made. This is called a persistent selection. Final Cut Pro now remembers your selections on previous clips. So if you're going through and previewing and deciding what you want to import, you can come back to it and it's still going to be there. That's you don't right. need to make up your mind right away. And in fact, when it's active, when you click on a clip, it becomes it yellow. Okay. And you can hit Option X to clear out. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clear out uh, all these selections. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a fast way to make multiple selections. I believe this is like a Industry first. No other software allows you to take like a, a clip and make multiple selection ranges on it for import. So when I'm importing a clip from a camera, I don't have to bring the whole thing in. I can select part of it. Correct. But even more than that, I can make select multiple ranges of that clip to Correct. import. That's right. Okay. So, so how I'm, do I do I'm that? I'm going to resize this a little bit so we can see more of it. So what I'm going to do is change the view as well because there's a new view. We're looking at, at a view that's very much uh, a film strip view, and we go to a list view, and in this, now we get this view. And we have these now these metadata columns. So like we can sort things uh, by let's say frame size or like maybe start time code or duration. We can move these around. I can I can then choose uh, different metadata uh, uh, columns I want to show like notes. I want a notes column where I can actually make notes now on the clip. So this looks exactly this looks very much like the event browser after you've imported media. That's right. But here you're going to import media and you can make all these decisions and sort your media before. Yes, if you have a big card, a lot of material, it's really helpful. Um, just to make the the selection thing a little easier, I, I like working in this view. So you can you can work very quickly in this view because you can just go clip to clip to clip to clip. Okay, I, I found it. I I find it very um, much faster than the other view when you're initially making your your clip selections. Um, so you can also uh, scale, you know, the uh, the thumbnail size. The, the thumbnail size. So if I drag the slider, I can actually see more or less of the okay. clip, which is a kind of handy. So you'll be able to see all your 
uh, selections. Now, one thing about this is that uh, it takes uh, sometimes it takes a little. Well, it's bit loading to, off the card, it's right? It's loading off yeah, the card. Yeah, it's loading it into RAM off the card. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm I'm going to make some selections on this clip, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my initial selection by. So can you just do I and O to like yeah, in the? Yeah, you just hit I. Okay. And I'll go ahead and play, and press O right there. And no, it's still playing. I'm going to set my next selection range. I'm going to use Command Shift I to set my next in point. Command Shift O to set my next out point. Still playing. Command Shift I set my in point. Command Shift O to set my out point. Ah, uh, because if you did I and O, it would just get rid of the old one, and make a new one. Correct. But Command Shift I and O allows you to make. You now have multiple selections on that same clip. Correct. So now you could import, or if you went to something else, they would, those would remain? They would. So if I can go to another clip altogether, those, you can see those. They're all still there. They're still there. Okay. If I select it. There they are. There they are. And I, now, so if I, were, if I were to import right now, it would import all these selection ranges by clicking the Import Selection button. Awesome. So, so that's really nice. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of other things. I'm working, again, right off the, right off the card, right off, directly off the GoPro camera. Now I want to work off the DSLR, which is the 7D. Now, Final Cut Pro 10 supports what they call PTP, or Picture Transfer Protocol. Okay. Basically, in a nutshell, it's gobbledygook for saying, I can plug in my camera and import directly now. I don't have to you know, pre, um, open up the Apple's you know, camera capture app, or what's image capture image app, capture. to see it. I can now deal with it right on the card. Now, but there's one little thing you need to know about working directly off the camera. Okay. When you select a clip, Wait, you're, are you on the 60D? I'm on this. Actually, let's go to 60D. Thank you. So I'm going to go to the 60D, and when I select a clip, and these are mostly photos here. I think the photos, uh, I think the videos are at the bottom. If I select a video clip, it's a lot of, a lot of images here. If I select a clip, it'll only allow you to select the entire clip. You can't make selections. You can't set a range. You cannot set a range okay. if you're connected directly to the camera over okay. uh, the PTP protocol. So the PTP protocol allows you to connect directly and import directly off the camera, but it is uh, limited to the whole clip. Correct. Okay. Yes, in fact, not only uh, with PTP cameras, but anything coming directly off your hard drive as well. Okay, anything on your file system. Uh, if you just, if you've system. got a QuickTime movie on your hard drive, you need to import the whole Correct. thing. Correct. Now, okay. here's the workaround. Here's the cool thing that we discovered by accident. We discovered that if you take the camera, the card, the media out of the camera and put it in a card reader, you can make selections. So, wait a minute. All right, so this, this card comes from a 7D. Kevin 7D. A 7D. So, let's see it. Let's see. So, if I go to, if I go to the 7D, which is this EOS digital here, and you've got both images and video on this. And of course, you can sort it by uh, yeah, any minute you sort, edit that you sort, want. Sort it up by any. So here's, here's a bunch of. Okay, now here's, a, here's, here's my editor, Travis, on a recent dive trip. Now, I have, this is a 7D. And now, if I hooked up my 7D directly, I would only be able to, I would only whole be clip. able to bring the whole clip in. Not so now, when it's in a card reader, I can now make selections on it. Or multiple selections. Or, more, or more, more, bleh, multiple <laughs> selections, exactly. I can go in and pick the best bits of his interview. So, but prior to that, that's, that's Fantastic. huge. So just, Fantastic. here's a key, put it in a card reader and you don't have to worry about it. Okay. So if you don't have a card reader with you, you can always bring the whole clip in. And, and actually, frequently when you've got time, the best thing to do is to connect your camera and make a camera archive, right, yes. of the whole card structure. Yeah, let's talk about that for a moment. If you're given, you know, on a set and you're given a, a camera, a card or whatever, you're really, the best way to work is to immediately select the camera if you're in a hurry and you want to make sure that all the bits are retained yeah. and all the data, metadata structures of the card are maintained. You want to select it and then create what's called a camera archive. So down at the bottom left there, you click Create Camera Archive, camera archive. I see. Yeah. Right, and then you'll get this. And when you save it, it'll save it as a standalone, uh, essentially like a little suitcase with all your media in it. So that's what you've done, and it actually shows up here yeah, in the that, Camera like Archive. Yeah, like, for example, I've camera archived everything yeah. on this card. So yeah. everything that's on this card now is in an archive. I could literally take this into the field and now reshoot. Right. I mean, shoot, I'm mean, just completely erase the card. But I have all my camera data now stored in this this archive, and I can and I can treat it just like, like it's coming off the card. I can set an in point, an out point. I can make multiple selections. There's there's nothing different about it. it. Treats it just like a connected camera. So if you're doing a shoot and you know you need to erase the card to use it again, you can make a camera archive to get everything in. But let's say you're doing news or something and you're out in the field and you've shot something and you just want to quickly grab some bits. 
you can throw it in a card reader, set multiple selections on those little interview snippets, and just bring really? those in and edit and you're done. That's right. And then you archive later. That's right. You know, but you, you can just get up and get something done right away. It works It works fantastic. Ah, so, and okay. the best thing is, is that notice I can work with m these multiple cameras at the same time. I want to point your, uh, point you, point your attention to this little checkbox. This is important. It closes close uh, the window after starting point, which means as soon as you ingest, start ingesting, the window closes. In previous versions, it stayed open, leading some editors to erroneously believe that everything had to be ingested before you work. So they're on waiting it. for it. They're, the window's open, so they don't think they can work. That's so right. They're waiting for it to finish. It's like but you don't have to wait. You don't. But why? Is, so why is that button even an why is there even an option there? It just seems like it should always close down. Yes. No, because sometimes, like in this <laughs> in this instance, <laughs> okay, you may, no, you may close. Okay, no. Why? Because <laughs> What if you want to continue ingesting? Oh, okay, right. We've got three cameras set up. So you could start importing on one right. and just move to the next camera and start making selections. So I'm going to import what I have already have selected here. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, see. I think I already have an, a PCX. I'm going to create a new event called a Pixel Core. I'm gonna, so I'm going to import those okay. four selections into yeah. Pixel Core. Now, while that's importing, I'm going to go into, uh, I'm gonna go into a, my other, I'm going to go into a completely different um, actually, was that different? <laughs> or was it this one? That's working. I can't remember. Different or the same doesn't really matter. Doesn't really right? matter. Point is, can I can working. just I can keep working and just making selections. Go through here, 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 here. All right, um, and then say import selected. Yeah, I want to go to that event. Click OK, import. Now I want to go to the uh, you know, Canon 60D. Uh, that's the the PTP camera. And I want to say I want to bring some of these pictures in. And again, it allows me to just work with Continue multiple. To do that. Right. It's so importing I'm gonna, the background. I'm going to select these pictures here. Click import. Click import there, and I'm continuing to work without having the window close on me. So any kind of situation where you may have multiple cameras running on, on an event or uh, independent film or whatever, you could sit there with multiple card readers yes. and be importing in the background and making selections and bringing, so it allows you to work very, 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 very fast. fast. Fantastic. Yeah. It's, a, it's a tremendous feature, and uh, I again, as we said at the beginning, Apple has really, really made the workflow extremely efficient now. Awesome. And, uh, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. No, no, I, I think that's all okay, I want to say. probably enough for now, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I was going to say, if, if, if you want to learn more about the new features of 10.0.6, you know, stay tuned, we'll be going over them, but if you really want the full picture, uh, Steve has a training at rippletraining.com called 10.0.6 In-Depth. Yep. That, that's a full two-hour look at all these new features that you get to really work through and get to know them in depth. Or if you're new to Final Cut Pro 10, rather than doing that, you might want to look at the Apple Pro Video Series, which will take you the whole through the whole application from start to finish. Cool, Steve, great. I look forward to learning some more, and thank you. Thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.